Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Premier League Check-In podcast. And we're going to do a little something different um, this week, Matt. We have got a grading every Premier League team start to the season special for you. Don't worry. Matt's moment and worldie of the week um, will be back next week. Um, we'll do the normal show. Then we have got Malfort and matchup for you at the end of this show. But, Matt, what we're going to do, we're going to grade every team's start to the Premier League season from A to E. Uh, we're on the third international break. We have had 11 games um, played. Um, are you up for this then, Matt? And good morning, fella. Yeah, I am. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, that was Ben's fourth attempt at an intro. <laughs> I'm going to give him an E for that. Um, <laughs> um, Deserved. I, I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to um, point out before some people might take the grades the wrong way. A is well above expectations. B is above. C is as expected. D below. E well below. So if I give someone a C and you think, oh, they're having a good season, it's because I thought they'd have a good season. So, um, yeah, looking forward to doing this. Um Third international break. Obviously, we've got a big run of fixtures coming afterwards, but let's talk about where the teams are right now. We shall. And Matt, it is a slippery slope, worrying if you're going to upset anyone on the internet because you're definitely <laughs> going to. But the um, the main remedy for that, guys, is get your own uh, grades in the comments. And as Matt has already pointed out, don't take it too seriously. We just want a little bit of a feel of how everybody feels their teams have done uh, to expectations. And Matt, would you like to go first on... Projected title challengers, Arsenal, who I think, oh, I don't know, I won't predict what you're going to say. Um, why don't I just let you do it? What are you grading Arsenal? I'm going to give them a D because Ooh. I was uh, bold enough to predict them to win the league this season and they're currently fourth and they're quite a way off the top two. Um The fact of the matter is, coming into this season, um, I looked at a lot of people's predictions and it was... Man City or or Arsenal. I think maybe a couple of people might have said Liverpool, but it looked as if it was going to be between these two again. Arsenal have been challenging for the last couple of seasons. Um, started the season relatively okay. I think they picked up three wins in the first four or something, but it's it's really tailed off recently. Um, they've lost in the Champions League recently as well. Not, not scoring lots of goals. Obviously, Drew with Chelsea just before the international break. And considering I was um, one of those that backed them to win the league and they're nine points off the top, four... Um, 11 games in, I've got to give them a D because they are below expectations for me. So, um, yeah, disappointed with Arsenal, I've got to say. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, I was shocked because you don't think Arsenal goes with a D, but by our brief here, it kind of has to be. I wonder if anyone in the comments will have an E. Are they well below expectations? Because like you said, it's not only that they're not top, which was kind of the expectation or second, but they're they're quite a way off it. So, yeah, Um I'll, I'll retract my shocked face that I made when you said that and actually <laughs> agree with you. Um, I'm going to move on to Aston Villa. And this is really difficult because I'm going to have to give them a D as well. And this is the Premier League check-in podcast. So we can't acknowledge a couple of fantastic Champions League nights already. We, we can only talk about the Premier League. And yes, they're now playing Champions League football. And if we factored that in, maybe everything would be par. But... If we're looking at just Premier League and how brilliant Emery and Villa have been, for them to be ninth, yes, I acknowledge they're one point off it and it's back-to-back defeats. I think it's a big run of defeats in all in all comps, isn't it? Um, so I'll I'll give them a I'll give them a D, but that is laced with caveats and with the complete explanation that this is the Premier League check-in podcast. Yeah, and um, to briefly comment on Aston Villa I agree I, I've gone for a D as well um, I think both of us had them in our top fours at the start of the season um, currently ninth Ben um, so quite far off it but one point off third at the same time so uh, the table is a exactly. little bit difficult to read right now so it'd be very unfair to give them an E they have had some good results but the recent form hasn't been great I'll go with a D uh, Bournemouth it's got to be a C for me because I predicted them to finish 12th and they're currently 12th um, <laughs> So I, I know they're having a good season and anyone watching this briefly might be like, oh, C, C's not fair. Give them, give them more credit. Well, like I said at the start of the, the podcast today, if they're doing as expected, it's because I you know, expected them to do well. And obviously, that you know, they're doing well. Um, yeah, I mean, what's, what's confused me with Bournemouth is some of the results. They beat Arsenal and Man City in back-to-back -back games. Um, obviously lost to Brentford just before the international break. Got no problem scoring goals. Um, you know, I thought Solanke could be a miss, but 
you trust the process. Bournemouth are a very clever club with the way it's ran and Iriola doing a fantastic job. No problem scoring goals. We've spoken about how we like their short corner <laughs> routines. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, they're 12th. I predicted them to be 12th. Going to give them a C. I think I'll I'll be I'll be good cop then and I'll give them the B. You mentioned Solanke, I think that's impressive. You mentioned the two mega results. They're good to watch as well, um yeah. Bournemouth. And um I think there's something to be said for you know, being able to you know, you and I cover the AFL for being able to come out of there and actually build in the Premier League. And as a fan of Ipswich Town, I realise how bloody hard that is to do. So I'll go for the B. And I will drop our first A um, for Brighton um, because I thought this might be difficult. You know, it's like how many years can they keep knocking it out of the park, hiring the right guys, signing the right players? I thought they might struggle. And I think they're either as good as ever or better than ever, um, Brighton, Matt. So I'm going to give them an A. What do you reckon? I've given them a B. Um, I think I predicted them to be 11th at the start of the season, which, yeah, on reflection, isn't great. I suppose I could give them an A, but I'll give them a B. I'm going to be very critical here. Um, Sixth (laughs) at the minute, level on points for third place. But once again, it is so congested here that after two games, they could be 11th or they could be third. So difficult to pick through. I have had a look at Brighton's upcoming fixtures. They've got a nice little run of games where they don't play anyone from the top six for about seven or eight games. So they've got the real potential to to blast on into that top four and, and stay there for a while. And they're not in Europe this season as well. So um, all their focus can be on the Premier League. I'm going to give Brighton a B though. Um, I've, I've you know always expected them to be pretty good. They are better than where I thought they'd be, but we'll see. It's very close at the minute. Yeah, very much so. Um Chelsea, are we positive here? Ben, have we missed Brentford by any chance? Yes, I've missed Brentford out, haven't I? Apologies, Brentford fans. Don't read into that um, anything more than me just flipping between about eight screens on my iPad and uh, pressing the wrong button. So I led on Brighton, so you can go on Brentford and we will save Chelsea for um, one minute's time, Matt. Yeah, um, to make it up to the Brentford fans, I'll give them an A. Um, now, I was going to give them an A anyway, uh, maybe an A start if possible, because um, I, I went off last season as a basis for this season's prediction. Um, they were they, they regressed, didn't they? They were 16th, and I thought, well, if, if one of the regulars might slip down this season, it could be Brentford. It was a bit of a guessing game, so I thought 18th, because I didn't know who else might go down. Um, I know, I, th- I think you called Wolves might be down there. And at the minute, that's looking a really good shout. Uh, but they're currently 11th, so I have to go with an A. Um, really good at home. The best home team in the Premier League, Ben. Um, not Imagine. so good a- away from home. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I was a bit harsh with my prediction for Brentford at the start of the season. But, yeah, they're doing very well. A for Brentford. Yeah, I think I'll take the B then, Matt, for a couple of the reasons that you said. The away form and that I kind of had Wolves as my one to slip down a little bit further and and, um, struggle. Right, now I can correctly move us on to Chelsea and um, not miss anybody out. So that will be me first. Um, It can't really be an A, but they are above my expectations, Chelsea. The problem problem is, is that the bar's been set so high in the previous kind of 20 years that you can't really feel Chelsea not being in a title challenge. That That's an A for Chelsea. That's kind of the standard. But they're getting back towards that. And I think they've been better than most people um, expected. And I've liked them more than um, I expected. Mm. So give Chelsea a B. Yeah, I'm going for a B. Uh, I think I had them sixth at the start of the season, currently third. Um, look, really, really strong, actually. I mean, obviously, Cole Palmer is doing what he does best, but um, you've got to give Mareska credit, I think. Um, you do. A bit of an you un- do. Un- un- unknown him going into Chelsea, and um, they've performed better than what I expected. And, you know, considering they're ahead of Villa and Arsenal as well, they're doing very well. So, B. Uh, Palace. I wonder whether we might get our first you know what here. Yeah, it's going to be an E. It has to be an E because I predicted the mid-table at the start of the season because that's usually where they are. Um, 18th at the minute. Wouldn't be that surprised if come the end of the season they've climbed their way back up to mid-table. But uh, the fact of the matter is they've not been great this season. Um, Not scoring many goals whatsoever. They've scored um, eight this season, which is the second lowest, I believe. Uh, Defensively, not as bad maybe in terms of goals conceded um, compared to the other teams down there. But yeah, seven points from eleven. Doesn't make it for great reading. I think they've got some more difficult games coming up until Christmas. So 
they could still be in that bottom three get, when we get to Christmas. So, yeah, an E. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Because we all um, saw the end of last season. Everyone's kind of thinking, right, can this be the season Palace mm. move from the middle a little bit further up and <laughs> gone completely the other way, which is very disappointing for the Palace fans. So, yeah, it has to be a has to be an E, um, sadly, with just one win uh, so far. I will move us on to um, Everton. Hmm. Have Everton just done exactly what we all expected them to do? Or have they been slightly worse? No, they're probably just par, aren't they? I don't know. I'm, I might throw it to you. I'm going to give them a C because I don't think many people had them miles away. But then they did finish last season well, didn't they? It's either a C or a D, but we're not doing minuses. So I'm going to skew on the C, Matt. Do you agree? Yeah, it has to be a C for me. I, I had them 16th at the start of the season. Um, I think I got five bobons. Not not to brag, but um, <laughs> no, Ever- Everton kind of. I mean, look, it, by the way, it's so early into the season, the table might look completely different at the end of it. But um, it's their spiritual home, isn't it? 16th after the last couple of seasons, just getting over the line. Um, I think they've had some decent results. I mean, actually, I mean, if, you, if you're going to say if we take away the first couple of games of the season, but we're not obviously doing that, you'd maybe give them a B because the run of form since then has been better. But you take everything into account here, probably a C, but they did have a slow start and they have improved. Uh, Fulham, Matt? Uh, Got to be an A. Got to be an A because uh, um, I had them sort of the bottom of the mid-table section, uh, 15th, which... Maybe was a bit harsh at the time, but uh, looks very harsh now because they are now seventh in the table and very much in that European sandwich, as we've said before, uh, pulling out some really, really good results. I think they've got a difficult run coming ahead of them, though. Uh, but, yeah, really, really good this season. When you think how many how many quality teams there are up there this season, Fulham are being consistent and they're churning out points against some of the bottom teams here. So, yeah, very impressed. Um, we've said before, Marcus Silva, what a job he's doing. Got to be an A. I'll go the B, um, Matt. I'm just not quite as high as you are. And maybe it's a little bit unfair because, um, you know, could could they be at the, the peak of where they're, where they're going to be right now? It does feel there's Absolutely. a bit of an open door um, in terms of the, you know, the race outside of the top four, which we've discussed on the last couple of weeks on the, on the show. But yeah, re- really good, Fulham. I won't go all in on an A, but I will take a B. Here we go then. Ipswich Town. Now... This is really interesting because Ipswich were quite hyped at the start of the season. So I do think a lot of people might have them below expectations because a lot of people had them comfortably surviving. Um, maybe it's the emotion in it for me where if it's if I see a 17 next to Ipswich, I am cock a hoop. Um, so it's either par or slightly below expectations for some people. It feels very churlish to um, take any promoted side that's not in the bottom three and say they've failed at anything. So I will give them give Ipswich the C um, par. Um, do, do you understand where I'm going with that, though, Matt? Well, I think, didn't we both have them 17th at the start of the season? So we, yeah, we did, we, yeah. t- we tipped them to stay up, but we weren't like overly dramatic, like oh, mid-table. I know a couple of people Paul's, said... Paul Scholes was like, oh, there'll be 12 or something. You know, he was really confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously you're, a, you're, you're an Ipswich fan. You'd say this season is just about staying up. So if it's yeah. 17th, you take it. Um, it's interesting, really, because they've literally just got their first win and we've made it to international break three. But at the same time, we're only 11 games in. Um, it, are they above the bottom three because they've been great? And well, let me rephrase that. Are they above the bottom three because they've been really consistent? Or is it teams below them have been uh, worse than we thought? I suppose more of the latter there because uh, Palace and Wolves being down there is a bit of a surprise. And we've said, if you're an Ipswich fan, you might be a little bit, ke- um, little, little bit worried that those teams might start to fight their way up the table, in which case Ipswich need to drag Leicester or Everton down in that place. I think Ipswich are doing okay. They're just doing enough, doing enough. And if you stay close to the dotted line, you've got a chance. And that's where I've kind of had them this season. So I'll give them a C. I think they're doing all right. Leicester City, Matt. Uh, I'm going to give them a B because I did have them in my bottom three at the start of the season and they're 15th. Interesting, though. I mean, obviously, they're not miles away from the bottom three. They're they're just above it. Their recent form's not been as good because they did have a couple of good results and um, recently it's maybe tailed off somewhat. But 
I don't know. I mean, there also seems to be Leicester fans that, that don't want Steve Cooper there. I'm not sure if that's just because of the style of football or his connections back to Nottingham Forest or something. But I've said before, with Steve Cooper, you've got a chance. And uh, you've got Jamie Vardy and they've got goals in that team as well. So, um, yeah, B, because they're above my expectations. I think above everybody's expectations, really, aren't they? I thought a lot of people thought big struggle, changing manager, possible points deduction. No, that's nothing to do with performance, really. Um, and again, we're having to caveat this so many times that this could move quickly as we go through the um, heavily populated month of December. But yeah, I, it would be unfair to give them a give them a C. So I'll, I'll agree with you and throw a B in. And I'll move us to Liverpool, which just has to be an A. They've been absolutely brilliant, haven't they? And um, obviously the... There was a lot of chitter chatter, Matt, about not many signings coming in, and you know you have to, you know, follow up Klopp. What are you going to do to follow Klopp? Well, um, seems like the smartest thing they could have done was take a lot of the good and just give it a little bit of time. Um, and maybe other clubs are going to look at that now and think. I mean, I, I know Matt. It's not the case sometimes where you're actually a manager leaves and they've been successful. Normally, a manager gets sacked, you know, nine times out of ten, but. Maybe people will look at this when there's a big managerial change and say, look, go in and for the first season, don't don't change a lot and drip it out all over. I heard David Moyes on um, on an interview the other day saying that's what he tried to do. And, hey, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's working for Arna Slot, A. Yeah, and I'll agree with an A. Um, looking at how we're describing the grades, I mean... I was tempted to sort of say B, but it doesn't sit right with them being top of the league because I had them third in my original prediction. But um, if someone had said to me, would you be surprised if Liverpool win the league? I might have been like, well, yeah, maybe a little bit, but wouldn't have been like dramatically surprised because I think um, after uh, Man City and Arsenal, they are the next best team to challenge. But um, yeah, you've got to be an A. You look at the points that they're churning on, the, the gap they've opened up already. They've been brilliant. So A, yeah. Can bad cop Matt find an E? For Man City, I wonder. Well, because I predicted Arsenal to win the league, I actually had Man City second, and that's where okay. they currently are. So, with that, I, I will give them a C, but based on the results and most people's expectations, you'd think it would be below a C, because they've lost four in a row in all competitions coming into this international break. I know all four have been away from home, but um, yeah, they've got to start putting things right and... Um, I wouldn't be that surprised if they could still go on to win the title. So I'll, I'll give them a C. I'll be actually quite nice to Man City. Okay, I'll rein in my E then, Matt, and I'll go for I'll go for a D, just purely because my expectations for Manchester City are that at any point in the season after about four games that they're going to be top of the league with a cushion, not losing mm. games, and also the eye test looking incredible and just battering teams and not really doing any of those things. I suppose maybe it'd be a Maybe you've convinced me it'd be a bit churlish to give them a give them an E, but um, I'll give them a D. They're definitely definitely below my expectations. Um, Manchester United. So I think in a lot of people's narratives, Matt, their predictions for Manchester United were that Eric Ten Hag would be sacked at some point, and then they would rally after he's been sacked and be in a reasonable place in the table. So even though we might get to exactly that, we're not at that yet. I think that will happen. So they have to be below my... Ex They're not an E, though. I'm not surprised that this is happening. So I'll give Manchester United a D. And I do think they'll rally now. But if they could start after Sunday, that'd be a big help. Yeah, do you know, it's an interesting point you said there. I'm not massively surprised, but they are quite far out from where I originally predicted them. I'm tempted to give them a U for ungraded, but um, <laughs> you're right, though. No, you've raised a very good point. They're bringing in the new manager now, Amurim, and surely this is the bottom of the peak, if that makes sense, the bottom of the, the trough, trough or whatever yeah. we call it. Yeah. That's it, and it should, it should start climbing upwards, um, not scoring lots of goals, not scoring lots of points, but... Um, you'd imagine they'll get somewhere back into that top half and maybe back towards the European places, but they've really blown any real chances of a top four finish. Well, maybe, maybe not. It depends how good they are under Amurin, but I'll give them an E actually, just because they're quite far from fifth place, which is where I predicted them. Okay. Um, where we go next? Newcastle United. I'll give them a C. Uh, I had them eighth. They're currently seventh, but 
nothing to separate those teams right now. Um, what will be telling is that Christmas fixture list now where um, everyone plays a load of games and the, the table spreads out a little bit. So where will Newcastle be at the end of all these games? Um, currently, kind of where I thought they'd be. Pulled out a couple of decent results. Uh, beat Arsenal recently. Great win against Forest just before the international break. I'll give them a C. Yeah, I agree with uh, C. And I, I think, do you think they're a little bit troubled by, you know, Eddie Howe, Ed, the Eddie Howe to England thing? And I think maybe there was some sorting out and some concern, some concern there. And I think there's been a bit of punching in the kind of first couple of years of the Saudi um, ownership there. So I think they're, I think they're a C, but I think there's a chance, like I've said numerous times on this show, that um, someone can infiltrate and move up a couple of places. It does look does look open with Villa in the Champions League and Spurs. Um, well, we'll come on to Spurs in um, in just a jiffy. Um, but I will move us on to Nottingham Forest, which has to be an A, doesn't it? You know, I think a lot of people had them. You know, they were seventeenth last year, weren't they? Just just one above the. Um, one above the relegation zone, um, going to be another another battle. Is are you going to get Spurs Nuno or are you going to get Wolves Nuno? Well, you're getting Wolves Nuno, and <laughs> um, we've talked, we've done numerous segments on Forest this this season, and yeah, they've been they've been tremendous. And uh, the dictionary definition, I think, of well above expectations. A, yeah, a start if possible, because yeah. uh, I think we both had them um, mid slash bottom half, if that makes sense. I had them 14th this season. They're currently fifth. Second best defence in the league. Second best away team in the league. Um, I think their business has been absolutely fantastic as well. The work they did in the summer. Yeah, brilliant. A star. <laughs> uh, Southampton, Matt, currently bottom of the table. Well, this is interesting. If you're just going to grade Southampton season, it seemed strange to give them a C, but they are kind of performing as I expected because I had them to finish bottom. Um, so I will give them a C based on that. But um, yeah, the Southampton fans won't be impressed. You know, it's not like, it's not like, well, a C, a C is basically a pass, isn't it, in the in school? But it's, it, this isn't going to pass for Southampton staying up this season. Four points adrift at the minute. They, they have had a couple of decent performances. They did get their first win against Everton, but um, they, they need a lot more really to stay up. You know, they, they, they don't, want a gap to form uh but i'll give them a c because I, I thought they would be bottom i'll go for the d on the basis that they've already played leicester and ipswich at home and oh, haven't won one. either of the games so i thought they'd struggle but i think they've struggled and they've given up a couple of key opportunities in games against the promoted team so i think the saints fans would have would have expected, you know, at least a win in. I mean, they led in both the games, didn't they, and conceded late goals in both the games as well. So I think they've been they've been bad, Southampton, and then when they've had a chance to be good, they've kind of snatched defeat from the from the jaws of victory a little bit. But again, um, a, any promoter team has my empathy. It's bloody hard work, I tell you. So um, you know, I'll, I'll caveat it with with that. Um, Spurs. I don't know whether I might need to give Spurs an E because I like Ange and I thought Spurs would be, I mean, I take all your points about the league table that it could change very quickly, but the eye test on Spurs, they've just been a bit flaky, a bit inconsistent, lost some silly games. There's this stat doing the round about them always going, going uh, behind in home games. Yeah, I'm going to give them an E. I think they've been. I thought they could have been really good this season, uh, Spurs, and they just just haven't been. So I'll, I'll give them an E. I think you might disagree with me though. Looking at your reaction, though, Matt. No, I've given them a D. I mean, it is a slight disagreement, but uh, yeah, they're below expectations. Um, I won't keep making the same point because it is becoming repetitive. But they are eight. Uh, sorry, I predicted them to finish eight. They're tenth. They could get there, but um, the one thing I'm really looking at is the form table, where it looks like they've got their Christmas decorations up early because it's red, <laughs> green, red, green, red, green, because they're winning, <laughs> losing, winning, losing, winning, losing. Um, and you can't make heads or tails of them. I mean, you know, in one-off games, they get an A against Aston Villa or Man City in the Cup, but then they lose to Ipswich and Palace. So, um, yeah, I'll give them a D. Uh, and West Ham United... I'll give them a D as well. Uh, I had them 10th at the start of the season. 
currently 14th. Um, yes, once again, it is a matter of if they win a game or two, they get up to 10th, but um, their form's not been great. Uh, the noise coming from the West Ham fans, not great, actually. Um, and to be honest, you know, I, I know some West Ham fans might be trying to think, well, let's look up the table, but I've been keeping an eye on them as one of those teams that if they have a you know, back to back defeats, they could get sucked into our famous relegation sandwich. So, a um, couple of okay performances. Um, well, against Ipswich, obviously, they're very good 4 1 mm. dispatched of Ipswich there. But, um, yeah, not consistent enough for me. And um, I think they're conceding quite a few goals 19 conceded this season. Yeah, not massively impressed. They're below my expectations. Yeah, I think I agree. And 14th, as you say, does look kind of all right, but. It has been turgid below them, you know, when you've got four, six, seven and eight points from 11 games from the bottom four. You've not had to be amazing to be 14th this season, mm-hmm. have you? And then it all, um, Constantina's just above that, doesn't it? So, yeah. And I don't know, the transition from Moyes to Lopetegui doesn't feel like it's been a great one, does it? So, um, yeah, could could be better for West Ham. So I'll, I'll go D as well below expectations this is an interesting one for me last one here Wolves because obviously I predicted them to struggle but I didn't predict they'd have one win in 11 and six points so it's actually probably worse than I expected it to be even though I did have them down towards the bottom and maybe I'm a bit naive that um, I didn't quite understand how hard it is at the bottom of the Premier League and the you know the chasm there but Wolves Okay, they've had FFP things, but Wolves, you wouldn't um, kind of categorise in with the promoted teams. But yeah, it's going to be a D for me, Matt. No, credit where credit's due, because you did have them down there and they're currently down there. Um, I'll give them an E just because my prediction was 13th at the start of the season. Mm. And like you said, it's taken them till the 11th game to get that first win. You know, they were 10 without a win. Um, the fixtures maybe have opened up a bit, so we'll see where Wolves go now. But um, yeah, you can't deny that the start has been well below expectations and, uh, you know, they're below two of the three newly promoted teams, which spells danger if you're an established Premier League team. Yeah, very much so. Right. Get involved then in the comments. Do you know what I would love to see, Matt? Uh, well, I'll tell you what I hate to see. Uh, just one comment about one grade we've given that's very angry and cross with us. What I'd love to see, Matt, is... 20 grades um get involved mm-hmm. in the comments let us know your grades and try and use our system as well if it makes sense of c b and par and then you know either a b or d is um above or below expectations and then an a or an e is very um much above or below expectations but get involved in the comments with that um and let us know what you thought of um us just taking on one topic rather than splitting the show up because if you like that we can do that um a little bit more often on the show. We'll always try and give the audience what they want. Speaking of giving the audience what they want, Matt, the Malfortin matchup poll is up and the audience has voted. Uh, 8% voted for Bournemouth Brighton, uh, 21% for Arsenal Forest, 28% for Ipswich Man United, but a um, bit of a landslide here, 43% for Man City versus Spurs, but both sides need a win in this Malfortin matchup, don't they, um, Matt? Both both struggling in their own way. They certainly do. And I suppose with these polls, if any two from the top six face each other, it will win. Looks but great, yeah. um, Ipswich Man United, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Ipswich, can they now get their first home win after that win at Spurs against Amurim? Um, and Forrest going away to Arsenal is fourth versus fifth, which is incredible. Uh, but Tottenham Man City, you're absolutely right. You know, the run of form for both teams, in particular Man City, four defeats in a row. They've all been away from home, so they're back at home now. It did include an away game at Spurs, which they lost in the Cup. I feel like they'll take this one maybe a tad more seriously. They've got to win. They've got to make up the ground on Liverpool. Um, I think they, they might, but <laughs> you never know with Spurs. Very unpredictable, so I wouldn't be surprised if they come and give them a good game. I think there'll be goals, is what I'll say. Yeah, it's been a good fixture um, in that regard. It's actually been quite a good fixture for Spurs, actually. The game in Manchester, they've got they've pulled out some... Um, Real whopping results, including a Champions League one um, yeah. as well. So, yeah, they, they'll have good memories of going up there, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, we did something a little different this week, grading every Premier League team starts the season. We hope you enjoyed it and get involved in the comments with your grades. 
do check out, um, we'll clip, um, well, maybe not today, but normally we have clips from this show going down um, Matt SB's uh, channel as well. And head over there for our League One predictions as well that we've recorded um, earlier on today. So plenty, plenty going on, but we've run a little bit long, Matt. So give us a wave and we'll say um, goodbye from both of us. And we'll see you next week for another Premier League check-in podcast. (laughs) 